Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Welcome back to Big Mouth and you can keep up with this and every conversation with me over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to my latest video where we are saying, or what I am saying is, if the Joker doesn't get nominated for Best Actor for Joaquin Phoenix, for Best Director for Todd Phillips, and Best Picture, I think we should all boycott the Oscars. Don't watch them, especially you in America. You have the power to give them the lowest ratings ever, because this would be an objectification. This would be outrageous. They would be... Um, they would be judging this film on political values and agendas and ideologies rather than the film itself. Now, I'm going to read you an article from The Hollywood Reporter from a few weeks back, and then we're going to discuss that a little bit more. Academy, Academy, members, Academy members tell The Hollywood Reporter their mixed thoughts about the weekend's controversial blockbuster. I don't know if it should be banned or it, or it should be given every award. Joker, the dark and gritty origin story of one of DC Comics' most notorious villains, marks a giant departure from Warner Brothers. Prior comic book fair count a courting a more prestige audience with film festival debuts and an awards campaign in the works. Directed by the hangover helmer Todd Phillips and starring Joaquin Phoenix as the troubled, mentally ill Arthur Fleck, who eventually becomes Batman's arch nemesis, the film set new box office records for an October release with 96 million domestic debut over the weekend. Remember, this is an old article. The theatrical success came amid heightened security at cinemas across the US. After the movie sparked widespread headlines for its nihilistic themes and violence. Now, many are curious to know if the film or elements of it will be remembered at year's end by members of the Academy of Motion Picture and Arts and Sciences, some of whom caught it at the Venice Toronto or New York Film Festivals. Others at member screenings in New York on Thursday or Los Angeles on Saturday and still others in cinemaplexes along with everyone else over the weekend. A handful of members have publicly championed the film on social media. For example, Actors Branch member Chris Rock held it on Twitter as incredible and a masterpiece, while Documentary Branch member Michael Moore posted to Instagram that he regards it as a cinematic masterpiece. But many hold their cards closer to the vest, especially those who have reservations about the film. On Monday morning, I reached out to several dozens whom I regularly consult with to find out how they are feeling about a pick, promising them that I would, ident that I would identify them only by their gender and academic branch. Isn't it ironic that a member of the um, academy only wants to be um, um, identified through their gender? That's very extreme left, isn't it? Anyway... Male member of members at large branch. Let me know. It sounds like some closet unit, doesn't it? Anyway, I saw it Saturday at the official Academy, Academy screening. There are about 500 in attendance. And while a film that dark and disturbing isn't going to get the kind of rapturous reception of a more upbeat movie, it was very well received. I think it's brilliant. Phoenix has never been better. The way he and the filmmakers handled the transformation from Arthur into Joker is nuanced and masterful. I love the way they dealt with the unreliable narrator aspect of the story. As we learn bit by bit what really happened versus Arthur's reality, I thought that the DP production designer and others created the look and feel of the period really well. And the fact that it has very contemporary themes of economic class inequities felt just right. Overall, a home run. Male member of executive branch, my son, who is 21, liked the movie, and I'm sure at his age that might make some sense. But if you, what, what, what's his age got to do with it? If you look at the beginning of that movie, Fleck gets his ball stolen, and then he gets beat up, so you feel sorry for him. Then you find out he's, mental, he's got mental issues, so you feel sorry for him. And then he's given a gun and uses it, so you've got this crazy guy who goes on a crime spree and you're supposed to like him. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? You know where we're going with this, don't you? Even though he's stabbing and shooting people, and the way he acts with kids leaves a lot to be desired. 
A mentally ill person is not acting right around kids. How dare he? A guy without his psych meds is not acting the right way. Oh my God, how wrong is that? To, to me, that kind of gratuitous violence sends a very strange message. It's going to make a lot of money. So if you're running a studio, you're supposed to make that movie. But is it responsible? I was once confronted with that same question and I decided not to make the movie. And the movie got made and I made a lot of money anyway. So that's one idiot, right? You just listen to them and the way they talk. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. You're not judging the film on its merits. You're judging, judging the film on, on, on an agenda, on your agenda. You are basically contriving these issues so you can say you don't like it, so you can say it's dangerous. But that is not the truth. Anyway, female member, ask members at large branch. I saw the film last night at the landmark with anyone, with another Academy member, and my stomach is still churning this morning. It made me uncomfortable from the very first frame to the last. But I thought the movie was extraordinary. I didn't read anything about it beforehand. So I thought I was going to be getting a sort of Batman. It's the most outstanding performance I've seen in many years. The way he moved everything. I mean, he's really a consummate actor. There's a not a frame he's not on camera too. What I don't understand is what everyone is, <laughs> everyone's all upset about. It makes me feel guilty for making fun of her at the start of this piece. Just pick up the morning paper and see the asshole that's run, running our country if you want to worry about violence. It's still early, but I can certainly see myself nominating it for Best Picture. And he has to get nominated or the actor's branch doesn't know what it's doing. Exactly, female member. Exactly. Male member of the producer's branch. I'm just laughing at these titles these idiots are giving themselves. I saw this one at the Academy. I probably wouldn't have seen it at a public theatre, but wow, what a movie, huh? It's hard to know where to start. Joaquin deserves an Oscar nomination. He blows the doors off the fucking place. And the cinematography was fantastic. Even so, I sure don't want to see it again. Oh dear, I'm not an expert on mental health. I'm sure there are a lot of people who will see the insane dancing after the killing, a sexy thing to do. Oh my God, that's exactly what we thought. We weren't disturbed at all. Everyone says they're disturbed by that and they feel uncomfortable. You should feel uncomfortable. No, we don't think it's sexy. We, we you know what we felt? Uh, you know what we felt, Miss? You know what we felt? We felt like we wanted to help people suffering. Um, people like me who are lucky enough to control their mental illnesses, right? I want people like myself to be in my position. No, I did not think it was sexy. And the worshipping of him at the end could also seem pretty cool to an insane person as someone who was once held at gunpoint. I can't get some of the images of gun violence out of my head. I'm very torn on this movie, but I'm glad I saw it. Uh, I'm sorry you were held at gunpoint, if that's even true, right? But at the end of the day, you're talking nonsense, but you liked the film, didn't you? And Miss, if you like the film, you should nominate it. It's as simple as that. Female member of Writer's Branch. I was accompanied by two, my two nephews, both smart young men in their 20s. Oh, this is going to be hilarious. Is this a positive or negative? They admire the film, but both said they liked 2008's The Dark Knight much more. How can you compare them? How, I know the Joker is in both, right, but how can you compare them? That's a Batman film. That's a Batman-led film. That is a ridiculous film. That's a, that, I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to kind of compare anyway. I'm certainly not one to advocate creative censorship, but but film can influence society and culture in both subtle and not so subtle ways. The focus on this film by the media as instigating violent behaviour is with what emphasis actually encouraging or daring that kind of acting out. As for the quality of the film itself, it wasn't particularly unique. It wasn't particularly unique. It is telling of a loner who descends into psychopathy. Even with Joaquin Phoenix being one of our finest actors in every role he plays. <laughs> uh, look, I'm astonished by that. I really am. Intelligent young men. She went with both her nephews, intelligent young men. Obviously not that intelligent, sweetheart. Male member of the producer's branch. I saw it in Venice. The trailer had just dropped and there was nothing written about the film yet. I found the craft to be stunning on every level. Beautiful photography design, costumes, all of Todd Phillips' films are impeccably made. 
but I deeply despised the movie. It made me feel really uncomfortable. I loved Darren Aronofsky's uh, Lars von Trier, Michael Haneke, and most movies that really pushed the boundaries of darkness. But there, but there was a nihilism and narcissism to this movie that left a bunch of us feeling really disturbed. And we had to drink away our discomfort. Warner Brothers has done an exceptional job of marketing the movie. And I respect that they took the Trojan horse of a superhero movie to make this kind of movie within the studio system, but I don't know that its substance at the core of what it is trying to say is what the first movie in the history that was too dark for me. <laughs> it's too dark for him. He couldn't handle it. He needed to drink away his discomfort. Imagine how uncomfortable it is for people living in these conditions, living with mental health illness, living with the fact not being able to get their psych meds, being too scared to get the help that they need. That's discomfort, my friend. You are a rich person who gets the privilege of voting for these films and you're acting like a child. You're acting pathetic. Member, member of the Public Relations Marketing Branch. I did see Saturday night at a combined Academy Guild screening at the new um, Time Warner Centre in New York. I thought it was very intense, but I don't know why New York Times critic Tony Scott hated it so much. I thought there was a lot of good artwork. Phoenix was amazing as the Joker, and the story was compelling. I don't know if it's best picture, but Phoenix was amazing. Look, mate, the crap made in Hollywood is obviously best picture, and if you don't at least nominate it, you're a twat. Male member of the writer's branch. I loved the movie. I thought the filmmaking was exceptional. Certainly the most innovative superhero movie since The Dark Knight. It's gritty and real and beautiful. And I think an, a, an attempt to understand what's going on in our society right now. I haven't seen any of this season's Academy movies yet. They're all shit, I can tell you that. But artistically, I think this film is stronger than many of last year's Oscar-nominated films. But forget the Academy. How many other movies in the last 10 years has successfully delivered that level of filmmaking to a mass audience? Exactly, my friend. Exactly. Male member of the music branch. I'm in New York City at the moment. And I saw it the day after the film opened as part of the New York Film Festival. It's a powerful film. Well made, surprisingly considering... The director's history on the positive side, it shows a lot of empathy to mentally unstable members of our society. The thing is, as we know, he's not mentally ill. It's really funny people who don't think they're part of the problem. Uh, but uh, anyway, I just think it's funny. Like, it, like, it, oh, so, yeah, anyway, who were picked on, on the negative side of all the violence, but it is cartoon violence. But it is cartoon violence. No, it's not. I think the score, particularly the source cues, lighting it up. We have problems in our society. I don't think the film is going to exacerbate those problems. Nor will the elimination of guns solve our problems. We have to work on our society in general. My mantra these days is if that it's not about diversity. It's about celebrating the commonalities of our humanity. Those qualities all human beings share. That's right. Out of Martin Luther King's book. What the hell did that have to do with Joker? Male member of the producer's branch. It's a really impressive film across the board. Wacking's performance is undeniably extraordinary. There is, there is nothing new in terms of craftsmanship, like how Dunkirk was shot or sound design of First Man. But still, if you see it in an IMAX theatre like I did, you can't deny how well made it is. That all being said, I don't see any reason why this movie should be out in the universe. There is nothing in it that starts a conversation. So because it... That actually... It does, but even if even if the, the case was it didn't, doesn't mean you shouldn't make a movie and it shouldn't be in cinemas. That's a ridiculous thing to say. That's st that starring us all in staring us all in the face every week. But I'm torn as an Oscar voter about what to do. The business it's doing is mind blowing. Taxi Driver Two just opened to almost 300 million worldwide. Taxi Driver Two, you twat. But I don't know what's responsible to do as a voter. If art is not used to start a conversation and it's just used to exaggerate something, I'm not sure how beneficial it is. It's too fresh to know yet. What I'll do with it, I don't know. If it should be banned, it should be given every award. Does Spider-Man Far From Home start a conversation? No! So shut up! Male member of public relations market. I thought it was lacking a clear vision and over what? Overwrote the doom and gloom style has become tedious. 
Only Michelle Pfeiffer and Danny DeVito in 1992 News Batman Returns have truly balanced dark with light. This one didn't have a point of view on politics or class, and its depiction of mental illness was irresponsible. You know all about mental illness. Are you a psychiatrist or saying No. Joe Wacking was so over the top, it became irritating. Todd's song choices were so on the nose, they seemed offensive and not ironic. Does he not know Sending the Clowns is a romantic ballad of regret and not actually about clowns? No, I'm sure he doesn't know what the bloody songs he chose for the film mean. You SJW fool. Male members of the director's branch. I found the film to be bold effort, but one that is cynical, a cynical mess, overly grim, hollow, and distractingly derivative of early Martin Scorsese, especially 1976's Taxi Driver, 1980's The King of Comedy, and not nearly as good. Ooh, you bitch! I also found it to be more than a bit irresponsible in terms of depiction of both mental illness and violence. Um, well, most people suffering with mental illness have said it's very, very accurate, actually. Anyway... When violence is meant to only to shock, I find it loosen. It, it isn't grounded in any real characterizations. Lie. It also seems the film was made only to provoke. Lie. But I find it isn't interesting enough to do that. Lie. Subtly, it's not the director or the Lee's actor's strong suit here. Lie. I found the performance fully committed, but one note full of bombast and ultimately exhausting. Lie. It's not nearly as affecting as Lynn Ramsey's You Were Never Really Here or poor Thomas Anderson's The Master, 2012, lie, in which Joaquin starred, but in this town the most acting equals the best acting, so I suspect I'm in the minority. Finally, I found the film to be a big disappointment, lie, after having taken the golden line on one field with self-importance, a film that strives to illuminate issues we, as a nation, are truly facing. Incels, bullying, extreme violence, but one that feels all second-hand, lie, basically, you don't want to like it, do you? Because of your agenda. Male member of the writer's brand. I was entertained by Joker. At this point, I'd rather watch a comic book movie that's more of a character study with no action and minimal CGI, even if it owes a huge debt to other better movies. Right, let's get this out of the bag, right? All this accusation calling Taxi Driver 2 a rip-off of this and rip-off of that. Every film, every book, everything creatively done in art is inspired by something else. This film is not copying those films. It's inspired by it. Get it right. The King of Comedy. Joaquin's performance is disturbing yet captivating. Scott Silver is a hell of a writer among the best working today. And Mark Friedberg's production design and Hilda Gunnelty's score deserve recognition as well. Female member of the public relations marketing branch. I saw it. And I'm not a fan. I am not generally a fan of comic book movies. Me and my buddy Scorsese have the same taste. Ha ha ha. But I find the character to be creepy and not in oh, that's a great performance. It's so creepy way. Jake Gillinghall in 2014's Nightcrawler comes to mind. Just an unlikable character. The well uh, well to, the, to spend two hours in. I want to see Downtown Abbey with all his lightness and pretty people, scenery and themes, three times to get three times to get Joker out of my system. It's too much for her. Male member of the writer's branch. Once upon a time, people lost their minds over 1971's A Clockwork Orange, 67th Body and Clyde. Joker is a dazzling, harrowing experience whose guts and artistry should be applauded, especially in an era of sanitised shrink wrap cinema. Well done. Well done. My, my sentiments exactly. I tell you what, the Academy's got a hell of a lot of members, hasn't it? Female member of the executive's branch. What does that even mean? Whoa, strange, depressing film. I was vaguely memorised, but to what end? I thought it severely lacking in any specific thematic point. What does that even mean? They, they, they talk like this, but it makes no sense. Great performance and impressive filmmaking, but a rather unpleasant experience overall. As I said, imagine what it's like to be someone like Arthur in real life. And it could be a man, a woman, a man of colour, a woman of colour, anyone. People are going through this. And it's important this film was made, but you felt uncomfortable. Oh dear, you better have a glass of scotch or a lamb brisco or something. Male member of the documentary branch. The good technically, the film is superb. Lawrence Scher's cinematography is appropriately bleak and leached of colour and intensified in contrast to heighten the horror aspects of the plot. Hilda's um, score is um, 
Propulsive score also underlines the shock value of the plot. Although the period song score featuring Sinatra songs, among others, is occasionally too unsuitable and on point. The clown makeup is significantly careless and smeary to add realism to the demented character and whacking Phoenix's commitment to his characterization is more than admirable, actually so convincing as to be literally career caping despite its un unredeeming evil nature. Now the bad, the nihilism of the plot, the intended intensifying of the spectre of social upheaval in today's US is dangerously subversive, no matter how exaggerated this tardy picture of Gotham City circa 80s is portrayed. Who knows what effect it will have on some deranged sociopath in today's climate of gun violence. Then again, like violent video games, there's a chance the possibility, imagine dream like unreality of the filmmaking might provide an outlet of fantasy and fulfillment to lessen the dangerous impact. Hard to say, bottom line, technically an interestingly experimental genre film that presents a, a socially dicey spectacle that I found personally repugnant. <laughs> it's, it's, I, think, I can't even believe what I'm reading, but it's hilarious. I'm having a good time, and I hope you are as well. Male member of the producer's branch, I have seen the film, and on the big screen, which makes a big difference for this movie, I loved it, and it will win Best Picture. I am really bored with all the superhero movies, but here I really liked it because it's a great movie before it's a Janeer movie. Male member of the ex ex executive branch, I thought it was rather brilliant, very powerful and disturbing, an excellent performance by Joaquin. Definitely raises the question of free speech and responsibility to society. Hmm, interesting. Female member of the documentary branch. Haven't we had a female member? I was at a male. Uh, I'm, I'm lost. I have not seen the film yet. My assistant, came, my assistant came in this morning saying she loved it, but that it was a very hard watch very hard we shouldn't watch hard watches we shouldn't watch things we shouldn't know about people struggling in the real world no we should only talk about representation and race relations and representation and gender equality the lesser important things because we shouldn't know about someone who's suffering with mental illness that's not very important is it Male member of the executive branch, I think the performance is outstanding, but overall the film is highly questionable morally. As a former uh, ex exhibitor, I would have serious doubts about playing the film because of the message it sends. I don't think the Academy should honour a film with such controversial elements. I found the film overall to be so unpleasant that I could not vote for it. There was also many who haven't seen the film of varying reasons, including reports of security threats. Male member of public relations marketing branch. I haven't seen it yet. I intend to, for sure. I'm aware that some Academy members may not see the film. If they do, won't be that receptive to it, despite its critical acclaim and popularity. So what else is new? By the way, in my view, the controversy appears to be mainly in the press and on social media. I doubt that many Academy members are as invested in this controversy as journalists and Oscar pundits are. I think there are about three Oscar voters on Twitter. Interesting. Female member of documentary branch. Last Thursday, we had a marital spat about going to the Amper screening of the Joker versus a Netflix screening of Marriage Story. Marriage Story 1. I will see it though. Oh my God. Did I just read that? Did I just waste five seconds of my life? Male member of short films feature animation branch. I was unable to see Joker at the Amper screening on Saturday. Night, but I look forward to seeing a film that is so controversial and divisive. I don't have any preconceptions. <laughs> of course you don't. The thing is, we all have preconceptions about art, don't we? About it, except that it may be uncomfortable. I understand that Joaquin Phoenix's performance and Todd Phillips' direction must be seen. Female member of Actors Branch. Haven't seen Joker. I had two opportunities and passed. I know that at some point I have to see Phoenix's performance, but what little I've read about the film makes me think this is a movie I'm not going to like. And I've seen a couple of reviews that said people are focusing on violence when in fact the film is not that great. I'm going to wait for the DVD as I feel the small screen will have less of an impact on me. You know what they say, the unconscious can't tell the difference between a movie and real life. So I limit what I subject myself to. <laughs> I just, are these real people? Are they on some kind of hallucinate drug? 
Male member of director's branch. I haven't seen it based upon my feelings about ultraviolence. I really don't want to. I was disgusted by earlier iterations of the series, watching heads being crushed on spikes. I might see it. How a corporate entity like AT&T, Warner sells sick violence and darkness. As one who made some tough act action films, I now want. To, I don't. I now want to do films based on great family material, engineer of holes, or series reality based on thrillers with a moral political centre, which is basically what you're all doing, and it's fucking boring. But instead of hi hiding your identity, why don't you show us who you really are, you cowards? Male member of public relations, marketing branch. I'm at that rare Academy member who likes to see a lot of my films in theatres with a paying crowd. I am incredibly anxious to see the film, but I wasn't anxious to see it in its first weekend, mainly because of all the coverage of whether there might be some uh, threat against the theatres. Obviously, it had no impact, thankfully. Theatres weren't on high alert. It went to the mail, and I, I saw a stronger police presence than I normally noticed. I will catch it later this week or next weekend for sure. Male member of executive branch. I haven't seen the film. I know at some point I will need to see it for award consideration, but I have no particular interest in it otherwise. Which is basically your job, isn't it? Female member of the film editors branch. Unfortunately, I have not seen Joker yet, but I do look forward to seeing it. I've heard amazing things, despite the mixed reactions about the political and violent aspect of it. Honestly, I'm a bit nervous to go into the theatre to see it, but I do plan on seeing it sometime in the near future. Female member of documentary branch. I haven't seen it. It's not my kind of film. Male member of public relations marketing branch. I've not seen the film yet, to be honest. I'm not sure I plan to. Female member of actors branch. I haven't seen it yet, neither. But my close friends in the academy, they are putting it off for now. I know it did great at the box office. Member of public. Female member of public relations market branch. I must confess, I haven't seen it, Jacob. I likely will at some point. Male member of writer's branch. Unless I haven't seen Joker. I want to. If only because of the controversy and because I adore the Alan Moore take on the Joker in 1988 graphic novel Kim, The Killing Joke. As for its director and his comments on what he calls the, the Winers Guild, tell me he's tell me he's a dickhead and a, a fuck knuckle. Basically, you've insulted someone for their opinion. So it's not him who's a dickwad and a fuck knuckle. It's actually you. Female members of Actors Branch. I have not yet seen the film. I will see it, but I got sick and missed my screenings. I plan to go next weekend. I've heard wonderful comments about the film. And JP, I'm actually looking forward to seeing his performance. A male member of the Writers Branch. I'm reluctant to see it at all. Male member of the Documentary Branch. I have not seen it, but you can say I'm with Marty Scorsese, who recently said he's, a, he's not a fan of comic book movies. Male member of director's branch, I haven't seen the picture yet, and I have some thoughts. Everybody who has seen it says whacking is brilliant. They always say that violent pictures will cause violence in the real world. It's probably true, but I don't know what, what, what you do about it. Well, we live in a very dark time, and the movie is just reflective of that. This is modern horror. Female member of producer's branch, shooting and haven't seen it yet, but I'm dying to hopefully this weekend. There's a few more left, we aren't going to read them. Male member of documentary branch. I have not seen the film yet. I am torn. I want to see a good performance, but who needs to be bummed out by depressing violence? My wife will definitely not go, so I probably won't rush to see it. It's just really funny because they are these people living in a bubble. Wealthy people, successful people. Right? Good luck to them. But they don't know how the real world works. They they don't want to go to, they don't want to see real life in the cinema, right? But the rest of us have to face it every day. And you know what? These people make me sick. They may create some fine art, but that's all they're good for. So, right, I haven't seen it yet, but when I do see it, I will be sitting right next to the exit. So crazy to have to think like this, but we have to. Wow. So that is the whole thing. I'm sorry it went on a bit long, but it was funny, wasn't it? It was funny reading these not loops. These crazy. These people are crazier than Arthur and the Joker put together, right? It's insane, isn't it? It's insane. These are people from the very industry that made this film. Uh, you know, there was a lot of people who said some good things about it. There was a lot of people who weren't happy with it and said they wouldn't vote for it. But here it is, people. Here's my opinion before I sign off for today. I'm going to tell you this. Do not watch the Oscars if this film isn't nominated for Best Director, Best Actor, 
and best picture. Quite frankly, it's as simple as that. It's simply, it's as simple as that. The truth is, this is the best film in generations. It is not copying Taxi Driver. It is not Taxi Driver 2. It's an original take on an iconic property, and it deserves at least to be nominated. And if this film isn't nominated for those three categories, quite frankly, Academy, you are a corrupt, politically biased institution.